one of the participants here requested, well, didn't request, I asked them if they had any interest about a specific topic. And they said that they are interested in just like how to write their first movie, how to write their own movie. And I love this. It's so exciting. My tips for how to write your own movie would be to first realize that you are a fascinating person. Even if you think your life is boring, even if you're like, I haven't done anything with my life yet, that's not true. You are a unique individual. No one is like you at all. There's a Dolly Parton quote that I love that is, find out who you are and do it on purpose. It's like, to me, the fun of writing your own story, your own movie, is to really lean into like your you-ness. So let me think of some ways that are like practical ways you could do that. Um, you could, If you have close friends, you can ask like friends of yours, like, what do you think are unique things about me? Or even just like character things, little character things. Something that I do that I didn't realize like pretty much no one else does is that <laughs> until my like close friend like wrote this in a script we were working on and we were basing a character off of me and a basing a character off of him. And I was drinking water and like my character in the script was drinking water. And because I drink water like this. I can't believe I'm doing this on camera. This is so funny. That was only a little bit of water. I will do that with the whole thing of water. <laughs> And so what my friend wrote into our script was she drinks a glass of, she drinks from a glass of water. It takes a long time. And I read what he wrote and I was like, do I really do that? I do do that. And I was like, you don't do that? And he was like, no. It was like, it's so funny. Whenever you drink water and we're in a conversation, I know we're just going to have to take like a 30 second pause because you just have to drink water. But the reason I have to drink water like that is because... I have ADHD and I forget to drink water and then I get really dehydrated and then I get stressed and I get a headache. So whenever I drink water, I have to kind of make the most of it. And I'm always kind of busy and bopping around and trying to do a bunch of things. So when I drink water, I'm going to just drink the whole thing. And But it's like those little beautiful things make a character really come to life. <laughs> so I want you to like, if you're watching this, I want you to kind of like settle in your body and just like close your eyes and take a deep breath and really absorb the fact that you are a fascinating person and you are an interesting person. And whether or not a script comes about from this, I think it can be a really fun exercise for you to like, just start to notice like what's unique about you and Let's say, let's say you're a freshman in high school. I'm trying to think of like unique things I did when I was a freshman in high school. Um, you know, it's just like little things. Things I did when no one was watching. Uh, you know, just like, I think something that was kind of interesting about me as a freshman in high school is that I was like very, very bubbly, very like, you know, social, happy, always just like cheering other people on like hyping other people up and like and um and I kind of dressed very like plainly <laughs> but uh like I dress I dressed mostly in clothes from the men's section of old navy because they were super comfortable and super affordable but at night I would go in my room and I wouldn't be so happy and bubbly and like smiley I would be often very very sad and and depressed and and for whatever reason, like I felt I couldn't share that with anyone. So I would do it. I would be sad alone. But if I were to write that into a script, it would be interesting. And how I would make that interesting is I would show the contrast between how Linda, the high schooler, is during the day with other people around. And then I would write a scene at night where she's alone and maybe like where she walks into her room and like the smile goes away. And we get to see this inner life of this character that we didn't know existed. 
when we saw her out and about during the day. And from there, you can kind of start to ask questions about this character that, that is based off of you. But the fun part of if you write a script that is based off of like, sorry, if you write a character that is based off of you, like you don't have to keep it like a biopic factual. You can create, you can, you can expand this person into like just anyone you want them to be a friend version. You can ask questions and curiosities. You can write fan fiction about your own life. That's kind of when I have the most fun is when I turn myself into like another character and maybe no one else knows, but I'm like, it's me. It's just me that I'm writing fan fiction about. But, um, but then you start to ask questions like about this high school character kind of version of me. I could ask like, why is she so sad? And maybe it's because she really, really wants to go to prom and she really, really wants to have a date to prom. And, um, but she's like so embarrassed that she wants to go because it's not her persona at all. And like, you know, I could have another scene that has contrast where it's like, you see her at school and she's all very like bookish and focused on school and grades and like, you know, and wearing just like kind of baggy jeans and like men's sweaters, <laughs> like that are kind of shapeless every day. So we see that. And then maybe we see her at the mall and she goes shopping for prom dresses. And we see that other contrast. And the thing about contrast is it just, it makes us curious about this character. We're like, why are they different here than they are here? And we want to know them more. Like curiosity is kind of our way into falling in love with our character. Cause we just like want to know more. We're interested in them. They're interesting. They're not behaving the way we thought they would. Um, so let's say this Linda high school character is um she's trying on prom dresses and maybe she tries on like kind of a plain black dress at first and then she's trying on like more and more kind of out there until she's wearing like this green mermaidy like flowy dress and the, and it's like kind of and she's like self-conscious and she's wearing it and maybe she like can't fully see it so she sneaks out outside the dressing room to see it in the mirror and maybe she just loves it and maybe she secretly buys it and she brings it home and her mom's like, oh, did you find anything? And maybe like Linda character is like, no, you know, if she like hides it in the car or something, maybe her mom can't see her because her mom's in the kitchen and she's like, no. And she just like secretly sneaks it upstairs. Now we're even more curious. We're like, why is she, why is she hiding the dress? Like, what is she going to do now with this dress? If she's not going to tell people that she wants to go to prom. <laughs> um, and this is just a little story that I've just riffed from one little detail, which is just that like, I was bubbly and social and happy all the time when I was around people, but then I was sad alone. And um, and this is based on something true. I did want to go to prom, um, but you know, I'm as I'm telling you stories, I'm kind of adding little fan fiction details about it. But that is how you can write your own movie right now from a very authentic place because you are an expert on your own being. And the other thing I love about this is when you base a character off of like even just some a few little details about yourself is it encourages you to just love these things about yourself and that is a gift that keeps on giving because then you just kind of like love more and more things about yourself you can you can turn friends of yours into like characters kind of fan fiction characters like it really gives you this kind of empowering sense of like shaping your own world or a version of the world that you don't have control over, but in your world, you can, and you can kind of figure out what your desires are, what your interests are, what kind of story tones you like. Um, yeah, okay, we have a question. When you have so many ideas, how do you learn how to organize them into place and which ones go into which script and scene? Such a great idea. I mean, such a great question. Okay, um, my thoughts on this. I'm going to read the question one more time. When you have so many ideas, how do you learn how to organize them into place and which ones go into which script and scene? Such a great question. As someone with ADHD and as someone with a lot of ideas that just kind of come like not in any order, that's helpful. I really recommend using note cards. Um, and what I've done during a time when I, let's say, I, I tend to get a lot of ideas like <laughs> in a short session, like 
a short session, like a couple hours, like an hour, 45 minutes. Sometimes I'll just get a flood of ideas. So how do you catch those ideas? That is a real <laughs> tricky thing. My advice is like, you just take a pen and for every idea, you give it a note card and you just try to keep up with the ideas. And then how you organize them is like, once you take a little break, whew, get some water, go to the bathroom, take a break, go for a walk if you want. You come back when you feel a little refreshed, maybe you got a snacky snack. I'm a huge fan of snacks. <laughs> My writing is always motivated by snacks, pretty much. Um, then you can look at your note cards and you can just kind of start to put them into piles. So this one time I had like all these ideas and I would, I was like, oh, this is a podcast idea. I was like, this is a screenwriting class idea. And I was like, this is an idea for my romance book project that I'm editing. And I was like, and this is an idea for a new script. And so I had four piles and I just kind of went through them and I was like, this is this. And sometimes there was like, and here's an idea for this project that I worked on five years ago. I'm just going to put this over here in this own little, its own little like Pluto planet pile where I have the rest of my solar system ideas. And, um, and the main thing, the main thing that makes this so actually really easy and helpful and actually quite easy to organize and feel like capable of managing is that, um, you just got to love the fact that this is how your brain works. It is a gift to have so many ideas. I know it has not always felt like that. I know it has probably felt like a curse <laughs> to have so many ideas. Um, like, you know, when I, when I have a conversation with someone, if I'm even like a little bit caffeinated or a little bit like kind of anxious, maybe I'm meeting a new person, my, I can feel how my brain just like pops around to different ideas, but that's what lights me up is like creating in the moment, being creative with storytelling and what I'm talking about and following just passions and interests. Um, and that's what you're doing as you're writing. You're in a fun conversation with yourself where like lots of different ideas are coming. Lots of different parts of you are contributing ideas. So yeah, that's, that's what I would recommend is just, no, first of all, just going like, I have a brain that creates a lot of ideas in no order, like, and in an order, it will never be in order <laughs> and that's okay. Um, and I say like, never, that's not true. Sometimes I have gone into flow, uh, where ideas have come out in order. I'll tell you a little bit. Okay. So here, I'll tell you about that in a second. But basically, when you have so many ideas, um, how you learn to organize them I is use office supplies that fit the, the way the ideas are coming out. So if your brain doesn't work like, I have an idea for an essay that I just want to write a draft of, like right now. Um, for that, you could use like a piece of paper and just write it out. Um, but if you have a lot of different ideas, I, re I recommend note cards. What I love to do is go to the office supply store and just pick out a bunch of stuff that like sparks joy for me. I love writing in permanent markers. I have a bunch of different colors of them. Um, I love writing on note cards with a black permanent marker. There's just something so confident about it. I love the way it looks. I love the, it's like you're painting with ink and it's pretty. Um, find things that you enjoy doing. Because like writing just takes time to work on a project, even a little bit at a time over a long time. It's going to add up to a lot of writing. So if you find a pen you really like writing with, a mark you, you really like writing with, that's going to make the whole process more fun. And you'll feel how you're just being kind to yourself throughout it. Like we're, we're, very, we're very loving about all this. And that's how you're going to get your best ideas is if you're loving to yourself and who you really are. Um, love your brain. Love the way your brain creates ideas. And... And don't pressure yourself to, this is the main thing. Don't pressure yourself to organize the ideas as they're coming out. Just get them out. Um, Brene Brown, who is a psychologist and researcher speaker that I love, she calls it an SFD, which stands for a, a shitty first draft. Um, and she does that with everything. She's done like super famous talks. She's been on Oprah, like all the things. Um, she always writes like a shitty first draft. Just let it be bad. Let it be bad. Let it be disorganized. Let it be just like oh, 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 messy, but it's out and it exists and it's real. And as, as soon as it's out of your head, it becomes so much easier for the idea generating part of your brain to just like take a break. Cause it got its, it got its voice heard. And then the part of you that is good at sorting can come out and just do its thing. 
and just do a first draft of it. It doesn't have to be perfectly organized the first time you do an organizational pass at it. Um, Cause let's say you have a bunch of ideas for a script for a movie you want to write. And you just have kind of one line of dialogue here, an idea for a scene here, an idea for a way there could be a fight at some point, an idea of maybe how you want the happy ending to be, um, a character that you maybe want to add. Just get it all. Just a note card for each one. Um, give yourself a break. Taking breaks is huge. <laughs> Giving your brain just a little bit of rest is so good. It's so rejuvenating for the brain. And um, and yeah, you'll I I I would bet that you will be amazed what a little bit of love for your natural brain's process does for your process and um, which is taking breaks and just baby steps, just baby steps of uh, it doesn't have to be like, I do it all in this session. Um, I've certainly applied that kind of pressure on myself before. You can get work out of yourself by being like your own her taskmaster. I just, I have found that it's never my my best work. It's never the best that I like the most. Um, the work that feels most like me that I'm like, wow, this feels like special and like kind of just comes to life off the page. That stuff where I like, I come in softly and I'm just like, let's do a bunch of note cards. Um, for those examples of different like script, script, like all those different little script ideas, what you can do then is take those note cards and I have a cork board that's about like yay big. And you can just start pinning them in an order and you can, and then you can play around with it. The key word is playing. You don't have to organize it perfectly. You can play with putting them in an order that just you're going to try. Phoebe Waller-Bridge, who wrote Fleabag, great show. She's done a ton of stuff. She has a ton of credits. Yeah, she. I was trying to think. She's on all these like big name uh, stuff. Anyway, she's a hilarious performer, a really funny, just talented writer. But what I love about what she says about her process is she's got a very flowy process. If she writes at 4 a.m., she writes at 4 a.m. It's no big deal. Um, but what she said once is like about how she loves like just put it just like throwing it on the wall, just kind of like putting two scenes next to each other that maybe she didn't think should go next to each other, but she just, she's trying it. And then she gets new ideas of like, Oh, but if they were next to each other, what could make it make sense that they're next to each other? Um, and, and it can just like that playfulness is so good. She also has a quote about like, or about what she says to herself to inspire her own writing. And it's something like, write Like you're not afraid. And I would, I would, whenever I take that advice, it's great. Whenever I remind myself to take that advice, it's great. But yeah, I would encourage you to do that too. Like, write like you're not afraid. Write down notes like you're not afraid. <laughs> you're not afraid that they're not going to make sense later. You're just not afraid. You're just going to try it. And why I love to use the word play when I teach is like, just play. Just play with catching the ideas as they come. And then play with putting them in an order. There's no pressure. And the idea of play comes back to like what I was talking at the start of this workshop where like in order to have a writing breakthrough, you need to just like let go of the project. Why that is so valuable is because if and when, probably when, but if you come back to the project, you're going to come back to the project from a place that's like much calmer and lighter and more playful. Like basically the value of completely letting go of a project, like a script project is the reality is your brain and your body and your emotional well-being. You just probably need a break. You just probably need some rest. And the benefit of giving yourself that rest and, and giving yourself permission to never have to come back to the project if you don't want to. The value of that is because you probably will come back to this project because you started it for a reason. But when you do, it's going to be from this place of curiosity and play where this part of you that's not being asked to work, that's not being pressured or bullied to work. You're just playing video games. You're playing Pikmin. You're playing Mario Kart. Um, you're playing a board game. You're hanging out with friends, just eating snacks. And you get an idea and it's going to be like, oh, I wonder what would happen if I put that like maybe had that character saying it and maybe I see them in a coffee shop for some reason. And then you just go to like, write that down later. 
just to see, because you're coming at it from a place of curiosity and play. And there's just a lightness to it. That's going to keep your process going in a much more sustainable way. That's not going to burn you out. Um, you know, we all run into burnout at some point because we all get stressed because we care about the project so much, but it's going to keep you going. And, and it's going to help you learn how to get through those sticky points um, so that you can kind of be your own best friend as a writer, your own best writing coach, your own best writing teacher, and just being there for you. And why I love doing this workshop is because writers just forget that. Writers can learn how to write. Writers can learn story structure. Writers have so many ideas, but it is so hard for a writer to learn how to be kind to themselves unless someone is actively teaching them and helping them do that. So that's what I love about the Stage Dreamers Workshop. Um, this was so fun to our attendee who asked such a great question. Thank you so much. It was so lovely to have you here. I hope you come back. I hope more of you are here next time. Again, this is every Saturday at 12 p.m. Eastern time. I'm not sure what the math is in other time zones, um, 9 a.m. Pacific time, but look it up. Join us again. I'll post the replay of this on YouTube and, um, and I can't wait to chat again more. This was so fun. Okay. I'm going to sign off. Thanks so much. Have a great rest of your weekend and have a great week and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.